In this module, we're going to talk about accessing maps programmatically. In particular, we'll talk about how to use the JavaScript version 3 API of the Maps API to programmatically access a published map from within Maps Engine. To keep this discussion simple, we are only going to focus on accessing a public map. In other words, a map that has been shared with a public access list. Accessing a map that has been shared with the private access list requires us to write the OAuth component, and we will cover that in a different module. Part of using JavaScript API to access a map published in Maps Engine requires us to specify the map and layer IDs, and so we will also take a look at where to find this information in Maps Engine console. To completely understand and appreciate the content that's going to be covered in this module, it is best that you have a basic understanding of JavaScript version 3 of the Maps API. We don't expect you to be experts. However, uh, it is best that you have tried using the JavaScript API to at least embed a map. Also, it is best that you've already tried uploading a data set, creating a layer for that data set, and also been able to create a map because until you have done that, we will not have details like the map ID and the layer ID that are required to be specified when using the JavaScript API. Before we proceed further and take a look at how to do this, I want to spend a few minutes on talking about why do we need to use the JavaScript API, or in general, why do we need to programmatically access the map using Maps API instead of using the built-in viewer. So let's go to the console, and I'm going to use a map that I've already created before. Demo one map, and I'm going to go into the map details page right here. Now, for any map that's been published using the links available after publish, for example, the Google Maps link, I can easily access and visualize this map within the browser. And I can share this link out with everyone. And all they have to do is launch a browser, put in the URL that I've shared with them, and be able to visualize the map just like how I'm looking at it right now. However, with the built-in map viewer, this is what you're going to get. You cannot specify anything else other than what's being shown with the built-in map viewer. However, sometimes you want to include the map and the layers that are available within your map as part of a web application, but also would like to share with your user other stuff. For example, you want to create a page that has some sort of menu and information on the left-hand side of the page. And on the right-hand side, you want to embed map with some of your information being displayed as overlays. A good example that I usually share with everyone is Eyes on the Forest, which is a public-facing example. I'm going to click on this page and launch the map. The information on this page, or rather the overlays within this map, comes out from a Maps Engine account. And so this is what I was trying to explain. Um, apart from the map that is shown on this page, you have other pieces of information as part of this uh, HTML page. For example, a bunch of paragraphs describing what the map is trying to show. And here is a different way of presenting the layers to the user. Now, if you compare this back with the default built-in map viewer, which is kind of pre-configured, although you have access to the layers that are part of the map, that's, that's the most you could do. So now that we've seen why you want to do something like this, let's take a look at how you can use the JavaScript API to accomplish something like this. Now, to use a JavaScript version 3 API to programmatically access a Maps Engine map, there's two things really. First, you're trying to use the API to embed a map within your web application. And the second part is to call Maps Engine to include one or more layers to be displayed as overlays on top of the map. Now, to keep part one simple, I'm going to use the Hello World example that's available on the public-facing documentation site for the JavaScript API. 
And so what's happening in this example is after bootstrapping the JavaScript API, uh, you're creating a map object to be displayed as part of the application. And so we'll need to make minor adjustments, which I'm going to show you in the next slide. But we can get started with this code piece. And so I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. Now, in the example, it requires you to set two things, the API console key and the sensor parameter. And so JavaScript version 3 API works without the use of a key as well. So I'm just going to keep it simple by taking out the key parameter and setting the sensor parameter to a value of false. Uh, if I save this example, folders I have prepared here. And so if I were to launch this file now, it should, as I expected, display a map. However, this is only part one, which is basically embedding the map into my web page. I haven't done part two, which is calling Maps Engine to include one or more layers from my published map. And so now we're going to modify this code to include that. Now to do part two, you'll need to use the visualization library available within the JavaScript API. And so the first thing you want to do is modify the line that calls the JavaScript API to include one more parameter that says libraries and the value will be equal to visualization. Once you've done that, you want to make use of the map data layer class within the visualization library to call maps engine and extract a layer to be displayed as an overlay on top of the map. Let's take a look at the documentation site that I have opened up right here. And so one thing I want to take note of is that this map data layer class is experimental. Things may change in the future. And to make use of this class, you will need to add, like we saw just now, this particular parameter called libraries with the value visualization when you bootstrap the JavaScript API. And here at the bottom, let me scroll that up, is how you will make use of the map data layer. And I have exactly this defined right here in red. So this creates a map data layer object and provides the map ID and the layer ID, which I intend to display on top of the map. One other thing that the map data layer object expects is an OAuth token. Now, I did mention earlier that we will need OAuth configuration if we were accessing a private map. However, we use the same class to include a layer from either a public or a private map from within Maps Engine. And so the OAuth token either accepts a dummy token for a public map or a properly configured and created token in the case of a private map. Once you're done with all this, you can feel free to add additional DIV tags uh, to incorporate other elements to be part of your web application. But in this module, in the interest of time, I'm just going to focus on embedding a map, which we've already seen, and include one of the layers from a published map within Maps Engine as an overlay. So really, uh, the only thing that is left to do is to include the items that I've highlighted in red here. And so let's go back to the text editor. And the first thing we want to do is include the library called visualization and copy these few lines. So I've defined a map data layer object. However, I still need to specify the map ID and the layer ID. And let's show you how we get that information from within the Maps Engine console. So I'm back in my console and I'm looking at the map whose layer I intend to display as overlay on top of the embedded map in my web application. And if you notice right here, there is this little item called Maps API ID. 
I'm going to click on details and this is where I can see the ID for this particular map and each layer has its own ID. This is the number I need. So I'm going to copy this and replace the ID and I'm going to do the same for the layer. Do take note that they will have to appear within quotes just like the example over here. Right. Now that I've defined the map data layer object and also specified which layer of which map to be included, final thing to do is tell where to display this particular map data layer object. And the very last attribute here, map, specifies the name of the map. And in this case, it happens to be called map. So this is what I do right here. And so I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now if I refresh this page, I should be able to see the layer. If you're using the Hello World example from the documentation side, do take note that it centers the map on Sydney. The layer that I've just included has vector features displayed around Singapore. So I'm going to pan my map to show that region. And if I zoom in, I will be able to see the information coming out from that particular layer. And as I zoom in further, the display rules start to act and I have different presentation of the features at different zoom levels. Just to confirm that this is the map, let's take a look at the Google Maps publish link one more time and it's exactly the same layer information that I saw within my map application.